Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. It's the final episode of our spring 2018 season, and we're headed to the Mulberry River this week. 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of the National Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. And we joined a party on Earth Day earlier this spring to celebrate some important volunteers on the Mulberry River. And a little later in the show, we're gonna show you a restoration project that took place on the upper reaches of the Mulberry that's helping to keep the river wild and scenic. We have improved the water quality. We have changed the landscape. And what you do here, you don't realize it, but it affects everybody downstream. And after that, we're gonna head down the Mulberry on a smallmouth bass fishing trip. And the final episode of the season means it's time for our grand prize giveaway. Hey, we're headed to Academy, gonna do some shopping for this season's grand prize winner. Gotta have a tackle bag. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. The National Wild and Scenic River System was created by Congress in 1968 to safeguard rivers with exceptional natural, cultural, and recreational values. It was a step toward keeping some of the nation's wildest and most picturesque streams in a natural and free-flowing condition, safe from dams and development, and thereby creating recreational opportunities for generations to come. state has almost 10,000 miles of streams, but only 210 miles of them have been designated wild and scenic. The Mulberry River accounts for 56 of those miles. Starting high in the Ozarks of Newton County, the Mulberry twists, turns, and tumbles 70 miles before its rendezvous with the Arkansas River between Alma and Ozark. Bubbling rapids give way to deep green pools that slide past timeless boulders, a gnarled beauty carved by water and time serving as its faithful backdrop. Beneath its milky green surface, the mulberry harbors numerous fish species, including a native strain of smallmouth bass that has captured the imagination of anglers since native tribes walked its rocky banks. Mulberry River earned its wild and scenic designation from the U.S. government in 1992, and this year marks the 50th anniversary of the nation's Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. Earlier this spring, fans of the Mulberry from across Arkansas gathered on its banks to celebrate the river and some important volunteers who helped preserve it through the recent past. This would never have happened without the volunteers from the Mulberry River Society. Their work and tireless effort uh, was very valuable. The U.S. Forest Service nominated the Mulberry River Society for a National Volunteer Service Award in recognition of work on canoe access points at High Bank and Indian Creek. The work was a collaboration between the Mulberry River Society, the Forest Service, the Game and Fish Commission, and the Arkansas Canoe Club. <laughs> This is just wonderful to be out here, and I'm here for one simple reason, and that is to thank the volunteers that have made this happen. 
Governor Asa Hutchinson helped dedicate the access points and was joined by Senator John Bozeman and Representative Bruce Westerman. Former Governor and Senator David Pryor received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Mulberry River Society. It's a beautiful jewel for the National, for the national Forest here in Arkansas. It's something we should cherish and enjoy, and I hope you come back soon. Thank you. The festivities continued with an Earth Day party at Bird's Adventure Center on the Mulberry, capping a fitting tribute to a river that still inspires with its wild and scenic beauty. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. It's July of 2016, and construction on the Mulberry River Stream Bank Stabilization Project is now in full swing. You know, most people would think the simplest thing would be to just come in here and slope this bank on a two-to-one slope and riprap it from one end to the other. Well, number one, that looks ugly and engineered. And the, the rock vein steer the water back towards the center of the stream channel and it creates slack water against the eroding bank. Veins only work where you have moving water. So nine, 10 months out of the year, you've got a pretty good flow of water up against this bank, and so it's going to steer that water back towards the center of the channel, and you use less rocks in veins versus rip wrapping the entire thing. So it's a more cost-effective method and it does a better job overall. For this project to work, several agencies had to join forces and work as a team. This property is owned by Ms. Brown, it's private land. Forest Service surrounds it so it benefits the Forest Service and the people of Arkansas. Game and Fish, I did the design on this. And then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, through a SART grant, which is the Southeast Aquatic Resource Partnership, um, they provided the majority of the funding for this project. And also, not only did they provide most of the funding, but they sent um, equipment operators from Mississippi and Alabama and rented the four machines that is installing the rock today. He gave us the coordinates. We looked it up on Google Earth. It didn't take us very long to figure out we wanted to be part of it. It's a very special project. We could tell just from Google Earth the amount of silt and sediments that they were losing off this bank every year. We jumped on the opportunity just because of the magnitude of material that was being lost and, and the, what we could accomplish here in, in such a short period of time. My role in this has been, or, or I guess my interest in this has been all the sediment that we're going to be able to keep out of the stream with this project. Fortifying the bank like we're doing is going to just keep the, the, uh, uh, the soil from eroding, keep that out of the stream as, as uh, sediment that would otherwise move downstream. And we, uh, we have four service property just downstream of Ms. Brown's uh, property here. So we want to keep all the sediment out. Uh, not all of it, some sediment is natural, some erosion is natural, but this is an unnatural situation. It's just not healthy for the river. The crew went to great lengths to avoid unnecessary disturbance of the natural aesthetics on this section of the Mulberry River, blending the new boulders from another location with existing rocks in the stream bed. You can see, we know where the old stream channel was, and we've diverted the water through the old stream channel so we can work in a dry stream bed. We think in two years you won't hardly see these. these Nobody wants to come put this rock 
that's not native to this river system. We don't want it. It's just, in this case, our river rock wasn't large enough. It was round. We needed three, four foot diameter rocks that were jagged, that would really lock in together. So we had to bring in this rock. And, and there's a, somewhere around 2,500 tons of rock. It's a lot, but we, we've done a very good job on hiding it, mixing in river rock. Once the rock veins were complete, it was on to the next phase, improving the strength of the riverbank. In the fall, students from the nearby Oark School planted native trees, shrubs, and grasses along the riverbank. As their root systems develop, they'll keep the stream bank in place, reducing the loss of sediment downstream during periods of flooding or high water. It didn't take long to put this bank stabilization project to the test. This is video from April 29, 2017. Heavy spring rainfall led to widespread flooding across the state, and the popular swinging bridge leading to Kathy Brown's property was washed away. We recently returned to the project site to see how the bank fared against the high water. The veins were still intact, working as designed, and were beginning to fill in with rocks and divert the river channel away from the stream bank and back toward its natural course. And the new vegetation held fast and was spreading into new areas and providing additional bank stability. For those who worked on the project, results like this make the job extremely rewarding. I love this. It's my wife, my daughter, and then my job. I've got the best job in the world. It's pretty easy to see. Look where I'm sitting now. I'm in a beautiful mountain, those Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. Pristine river. We're doing our best to keep it, keep it clean, keep it healthy. I love what I do because at the end of the day, I can see something. You know, I can see, okay, that we have improve the water quality, we have changed the landscape, and what you do here, you don't realize it, but it affects everybody downstream. And we all live downstream with somebody. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Zimmerman Sports Center on South University in Little Rock. The Mulberry River begins its 70 mile journey high in the Ozarks, not far from the headwaters of popular Arkansas streams like the Buffalo, Kings, and White Rivers. But the Mulberry has a character all its own. From the milky green cast of its water to the intimate seclusion created by tight turns, giant boulders, and willow strainers, this Ozark stream provides a unique outdoors experience. and abundant rock gardens, the mulberry is immensely popular among whitewater paddlers. But when the river slows down in warmer and drier times of year, it also provides excellent fishing for smallmouth bass and feisty sunfish. We paddled and fished a short stretch with game and fish biologist Matthew Irvin, one of the agency's Arkansas Stream Team coordinators and the person responsible for a major habitat restoration project just a few miles upstream.
Because of its seclusion in the Ozark National Forest, it's no wonder the U.S. government has designated the Mulberry one of the country's wild and scenic rivers. It's yet one more reason to appreciate the outdoor life in the natural state. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of fishing gear with everything you need for outdoor adventures on Arkansas lakes and streams. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the watch and win icon to enter. The moment of truth has arrived. We're here in Academy Sports and Outdoors ready to announce our grand prize winner for the spring 2018 season. And that winner is Helen Moitz from Little Rock. Congratulations, Helen. Thanks for watching the show. And thank all of you for tuning in this season. We'll be back in October with brand new episodes and giving away then a $500 hunting package at the end of the fall 2018 season. Thanks for watching Arkansas Wildlife.